Oh, hello. I didn't, uh, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to Branded Laboratories. Um, today we'll be doing a uh, standard uh, heat threshold test on common household items by using a uh, incendiary blowtorch device. This incendiary blowtorch device, it's the top of the line, highest on the market, um, and also just, you know, fiery. So without further ado, we shall adjourn to the testing site. Follow me. Hello, and welcome to the testing zone. This is where we'll be doing our testing, of course. Um, our first test subject is a marshmallow. Uh, it appears the marshmallow has become toasted, which I couldn't have predicted that. Uh, It's science. It's for science. It's not... Very good. <clears throat> anyway, uh, up next we will be uh, incendiary blowtorching a birthday card that was sent to me late. So, that sums up my feelings about that. That's right. That's what you get from forgetting my birthday. Alright? Yeah. Oh, that's dangerous. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Was that too much? Oh. So as you can see, birthday cards, especially sent late, are incredibly flammable. <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad. I really enjoyed the card, as you can see. Maybe next time, send it a little earlier and it won't end up as part of my experiment. All right, next we are, again, along the same vein, uh, I'll be incendiary blowtorching a, uh, a birthday cupcake that I made for myself because no one was here, uh, and I didn't eat it because I was uh, too depressed too, so, yeah. It truly is a happy birthday to, to oh. <laughs> a happy birthday to me. Wow, it really sums up how I feel. Burnt, crusty, and probably inedible. Uh, next we shall be um, testing a banana. See how that holds up its heat threshold? A little creme brulee, huh? Shall we? Incredible. This banana is, is incredibly durable when it comes to heat and fire. Um, that is something to write down for the log books. It seems just like a normal banana on the inside. Look at that. Just a, just a hot banana. So uh, next, all of this heat is really making me thirsty. I thought, you know, why not uh, try to make a little a cup of tea? So we shall be testing the heat threshold of a teacup. Yes, that's right. We are breaking boundaries here, pushing boundaries. Look at all the boundaries I've just pushed around on, on this on this platform. Awesome. Okay. Um. You look at that modern innovation at its finest. Now let me just beautiful, just like Mama used to make, huh? Let me just 
set that back down. Um, in terms of making tea, that took about five minutes of prep. Not, not very bad. I mean, honestly, quicker than normal. What were we experimenting? Oh, the heat threshold, heat threshold, right. Um, yeah, that was good too. Next, oh yeah, next we shall be testing the heat threshold of diamonds. That's right, we have actual real diamonds. One hundred percent refined South African blood diamonds. Children's little souls are trapped inside there. Incredible. Uh, it seems that our real actual diamonds, they were real, they were real, real blood diamonds, have sort of melted and formed one super black diamond. These are incredibly rare. I probably can sell this for a gajillion million dollars. And as all good scientists do, we must poke things that look ooey gooey melty with a stick. These are all scientific terms. Mmm, yes, like tar, the consistency of most diamond structures. Smell that? You smell those carcinogens? That's the smell of wealth, my friends. All right, well, we sure have learned a lot about the carbon structure of diamonds. Next up, we shall be finding the heat threshold of your average Lego minifigure. Let's do it. So you can see this is a snowboarder, a female snowboarder minifigure. She's accustomed to many types of frigid temperatures and snow, but today she shall be exposed to an incendiary heat blast. Let us commence. Wow, I mean it seems that my female snowboarder uh, Lego minifigure has miraculously transformed into a burn victim snowboarder Lego minifigure, which is incredible science. The Lego itself has become very mushy and soft, um, except for the, the helmet, the snowboarder's helmet. That's still, uh, that's still intact, so that's a lesson there for you kids. Always wear your helmet to protect from uh, accidental blowtorch incidents, I guess. I mean, let me see if I can pry her up here. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. The Winter Olympics are just a week away. You gotta start training, baby. Oh, just gruesome. Her face melted to a crisp. She'll never be as beautiful as she once was again. Crazy. Crazy what science can deliver. On to our last and final test subject. We will be testing the heat threshold of a soccer ball. So that should be exciting. Any soccer fans out there? Any of my South American watchers, viewers? Uh, viva. Football, okay. This is dangerous. It's really bright. Huh. Now, who would have thought that the explosion from a, of a soccer ball would be so anticlimactic? This is, um, again, fascinating. Fascinating science at work. This is roasting quite a lot. Yep, that's a, that's a forest fire just waiting to happen, huh? I'm just gonna take care of this like Smokey the Bear always told me to, uh, with, a, with a watering can. And I ran out of water. So um, I'm not sure what I expected, to be honest. I thought it was gonna be more of like a, you know, like a dramatic, like a big boom, but it was more of just like a boom. So, but you know what? Science isn't about being exciting. Science is about being accurate, and science is about being truthful to the facts. That's what we're all about here. So before it's too late, and before I um, inhale a lot more of uh, plastics, we have a surprise test. That's right. 
first time ever on this show, a surprise test. We will be testing the heat threshold of a can of, of cat food. So, yeah. Science. There we have it. Adult cat food that my cat hates for some reason. She won't eat it, so I'm gonna burn it instead. Just fascinating. Now that was the climactic explosion ending that we wanted from the cat food can there. Just incredible heat threshold experiment all around. It smells like cat food. It smells like plastic burning. It smells like carcinogens. That's, the, that's how you know that your science experiment was a success. So from all of us here at Brain Dead Laboratories, uh, I hope you have a nice day. This was a fantastic experiment, but also very dangerous. So, you know, as a warning, I'm not telling you to not do it, but you know. Please do this at home. It was super fun. It was super awesome. We almost died several times. Please, if you're a child out there, if you're a young child, five or four years old, please find a torch. 